What is going on, all you wonderful late plusers out there? It is I, Stuart, here once again to give you guys another Superman and Lois review. Uh, before I start this review off, I do want to make a quick apology. I won't have any images up for this review. Unfortunately, I've, uh, I'm in a little bit of a hurry to get this review done uh, because I have like kind of a, I have, I have a big work day ahead of me, essentially. But I uh, am really excited to talk about this episode. Uh, I just don't have enough time to give it the full edit that I normally do, so I've only been able to watch this episode once usually I try to watch these episodes at least two times before I go and do my review uh, but this particular time I haven't really had the chance to do that so it was just a one-time view however I think with everything that happens in this episode that is more than enough for me so I have plenty of things to talk about also if you're wondering why I'm gonna be staring at my phone every once in a while it's because uh, normally I rely on the images to jog my memory of what I wanted to talk about about each uh, aspect of the episode but for this particular review Review. I didn't have the images so I'm just gonna rely on some notes that I took on my phone uh, so don't think that when I look at my phone it's me being like lazy while doing this review it's actually me trying to look at my actual notes uh, but that all said you know the first thing we got to talk about guys Morgan Edge is Superman's brother holy crap um, you know my previous review I mentioned you know after he said brother it could have meant like you know he could have meant it in a literal sense but it also was possible he meant brother as in fellow Kryptonian but nope in this episode it is confirmed that he actually meant brother like he and Superman are actually blood related brothers uh, on their mother's side not their father's side uh, essentially what happened is Lara or La it was Lara, right? I think that was uh, that that was Superman's Kryptonian mo uh, Kryptonian mother's name. Uh, but she ended up, uh, you know, falling for Jor El. You know, the two of them had an actual relationship with each other. But we find out that Krypton actually, you know, kind of does like an arranged marriage type of thing. So she ended up matching with uh, Morgan Edge's father, and that's why she ended up having, you know, two different kids. One of them, of course, Kal El. The other one, Morgan Edge. Both of which were sent to Earth, but Morgan Edge was actually sent to Earth. Earth before Kal-El and unfortunately for Morgan Edge he didn't have the same type of greeting that that Superman had he was uh you know he he landed in a small looking kind of village area where everyone hunted him down thought of him as nothing but a monster and you know he he grew up he basically grew up with a very different perspective on humanity than Superman, whereas Superman, you know, he happened to land in the perfect area where, where he had the perfect people to take care of him. And unfortunately, that was not the case for Morgan Edge, so they both have very different views on humanity as a whole. Plus, you look at the fact that Morgan Edge is currently, you know, a billionaire, uh, which, you know, probably happened from using uh, his Kryptonian knowledge and super strength in order to you know discover uh, specific coal mines that probably you know he was able to profit off of and eventually you know make it look like he had a legitimate business you know and all that kind of stuff behind it so because of this you also got to think about the type of people that Morgan Edge might have worked with being a billionaire usually you end up knowing multiple billionaires and let me tell you uh, you know my personal opinion is it's rare that someone has a billion dollars from being morally a good person. Most people who get that, you know, get there, you know, to that billion, you know, point of uh, point of having that much money, they don't get there from being nice people. They usually get there from screwing other people over or from being terrible, you know, people altogether. And those are the type of people that Morgan Edge would have known, which also would have just helped him have kind of a more concrete idea that humanity is just terrible. Whereas Clark came from a community where everyone constantly helps each other, not because they, you know, have any obligation to or because they feel like they're going to get rewarded in doing so people in smallville tended to uh help each other because it was the right thing to do and that was the mentality that clark kent ended up growing up with and that's why he became the great superhero that is superman um, you know, you could look at the other version that we get in uh, John Henry Irons universe and I think it's kind of safe to say that maybe this version of Superman from uh, Morgan Edge's Earth just didn't grow up with the uh, same 
uh, the same childhood that Clark Kent did. Like, it's very possible he didn't even land uh, in the Kent farm. He probably landed somewhere uh, completely different and grew up with a very different, uh, uh, like, vis a vision of uh, humanity. Or it's very possible also that maybe Morgan Edge was the one to discover Superman's pod when he originally landed on Earth, and so he was actually raised by Morgan Edge. Uh, why did why that didn't happen on Earth Prime? I'm not sure, but um, you know that's probably my my assumption of why Superman goes rogue on the other uh, version of Earth on J John Henry Irons Earth. Uh, but that all said, though, you know everything else you know w regarding this episode was absolutely fantastic. And one thing I absolutely love is how both uh, Superman and Morgan Edge would try to appeal to each other. Uh, you know, you ha you never had a moment where y you felt like. Um, how do I put it? It felt like the entire time when uh, both of them were trying to communicate with each other, trying to convince the other person, it felt like violence was like the last thing they wanted to resort to. And I absolutely love that about the two of them. You know, when they when you find out you have a long lost brother, you don't immediately want to go, you know, oh, you're evil because you're trying to take over humanity or you're evil for not standing with your own people. They're, they both uh, think that they're in the right and they both think they can convince the other person. Obviously, in this particular case, Superman is actually in the right. But, you know, you could totally see why he believes he can win Morgan Edge over. And unfortunately, it just doesn't work because Morgan Edge has, like, spent his entire life hating uh absolutely hating humanity and thinking so little of them and uh because of that uh betraying humanity for morgan edge you know is just an easy decision whereas for superman that's something he could never do uh you know so all those aspects of the episode i thought were absolutely brilliant another thing that uh that happens in this uh episode is we of course Superman needs to find a way to stop Morgan Edge's device from resurrecting more Kryptonians, so he ends up having to turn to his mother, who turns out to be the one to have invented the machine. Now, she invented this device um, for storing Kryptonian consciousness. Uh, she invented it originally to be stored into a computer, much like Jor-El. You know, when you have the uh, AI of Jor-El guiding Superman, that's what the other Kryptonians were supposed to do as well. They were supposed to be stored inside a computer and meant to be used only for like kind of knowledge so it's kind of that saying of no one's ever truly gone as long as you remember them and what better way to remember someone than to like literally have a digital version of their conscience uploaded onto like a computer or ai of some sort now uh this this was the intention but it turns out you know kryptonian tech works a lot different than human tech so even though it was meant for computers it could also be uploaded into other people and uh, that's what morgan edge of course is trying to do with the people of smallville turn them into evil kryptonians or you know upload the consciousness of kryptonians into them uh so the only one who knows how to stop this is superman's mother lara and they uh, are a they end up having to do the exact thing that morgan edge is doing but they least uh you know do it with the in mind with the idea in mind that they're eventually going to stop it and of course you have none other than lana herself uh, volunteering to be the host uh something that something that both superman and lois aren't really happy about but they totally understand why she wants to do this uh of course the big worry that they bring up to her attention is the fact that they don't know if this is reversible they're you know talking to superman's mother in hope that if it is reversible only she will be the one who will be able to find out but lana you know she doesn't care she feels very responsible for what happened uh to smallville with morgan edge especially because you know it was her husband uh, kyle that really pushed uh to have Morgan Edge, uh, you know, and his company work in Smallville. He was the one pushing the citizens to accept this, and she kind of st uh, stood by and did nothing. And then uh, eventually, when she started working for Morgan Edge, even though she originally did it to get information for Lois Lane, uh, you know, she still had to do her job. So she still had to give him a list of, you know, people that she thought were uh, eligible to be leaders for uh, this program that Morgan Edge was working on, which those people ended up being the human host. So a big part of her feels responsible and that's why she ends up being the host for uh for Lara now Lara's interaction when she finally you know when we get to see her for the first time in the show uh 
her re interaction with Superman I thought was so well written. Uh, I absolutely loved uh, having the scene where Superman was telling her all about his life on Earth and the fact that he now has uh, kids so that she's like actually a grandmother. Um, the only complaint I have about this is sadly we never get to see her interact with either Jordan or Jonathan Kent. Uh, instead, it's just kind of the brief interaction with, uh, with her and Superman and then her and Lois Lane. But I absolutely love, um, I think one of the most uh, kind of heartwarming moments about the scene is when Superman's kind of like telling her about his life on, on Earth and how welcomed he was by everyone. You know, she is amazing. She's just like so relieved to hear that because that's all she wanted. She wanted, uh, she wanted Kal-El to have like, you know, a normal life, technically by Kryptonian standards, but if not Kryptonian, at least by Earth standards, which is, you know, I'd, I'd say pretty similar just without the arranged marriage part of it like you know uh, Clark being able to choose Lois Lane rather than you know the two of them being assigned together like it sounds like they do on Krypton and I think that's a uh, part that's a big chunk of why uh, she was super happy to see that Clark actually found someone that he loved is because she knows what it's like to just be assigned to someone that you don't necessarily have feelings for uh, so again I thought those interactions were great I loved it when she was with Lois Lane uh, you know, the two of them working together, of course, was great. Uh, and, um, you know, the next, the next part of the episode that I thought was really cool was, of course, we had, uh, Sarah, who is, is just like, she's in this weird point where the, all this stuff is now happening around her, but she's kind of being left out. And you have Jordan Kent, who clearly wants to tell her about everything, but he very much has kind of been like, uh, forced to keep his mouth shut by his parents and of course by his grandparent but you got Jonathan Kent who is just kind of fed up with the whole thing so he ends up being the one to uh, tell to tell Sarah about everything currently going on uh, and it's what leads to them eventually uh, running into or not running into they basically go to uh, Sarah's dad who, of course, from the previous episode, has now been taken over by another Kryptonian. He's currently locked up by the military in a Kryptonite cage. And what I thought we were going to get here, here's what I thought was kind of fascinating, because usually these type of scenes, you always have, like, uh, the per the person who's being possessed, uh, they they're always trying to mimic the person that they're possessing. So when Sarah walked into the tent, I kind of half expected Kyle to be like, Sarah, you gotta get me out of here, or something like that. Like, he was going to try to trick her. But they, I, I feel like the writers of the show just knew that that was such an overdone trope that they didn't even really bother trying to do that. So right off the bat, the moment she walks in and she's like, Dad, you know, you have Kyle's body just being like, Daddy's gone, sweetheart, and he's never coming back. And so it's like, oh, okay, so they're just going to skip that whole, uh, I'm, I'm really your dad, you got to help me kind of thing. So I actually really like that about the episode. I like how it's, it tries a lot of times not to do what you expect because you've seen it so many times and instead takes you know kind of elements that have been done before but it tries to take its own unique twist on them another thing i absolutely love about this is that you know at the very end of the episode when you have uh when you have sarah and jordan together at a diner uh i i half expected her to be annoyed with jordan for keeping this all from her but i love how um she was just kind of like, she felt sorry for Jordan for having to keep this a secret. Like she could tell how much it was hurting Jordan Kent to like not be able to talk about this with her as much as he clearly wanted to. And I just thought that was so mature of not just Sarah, but I think it's very mature writing. Uh, and I think it's just funny because I... I look at these tropes that are usually done, not just CW tropes, I mean just tropes when it, when it comes to television, and I keep expecting Superman and Lois to fall in one of these tropes, and then I'm constantly surprised when it doesn't, and it goes uh, into a very different direction, and I think this show does a really good job of that. Like, it doesn't try to subvert your expectations for the, for the sake of subverting expectations like, you know, Game of Thrones, for example. It, it really gives you something familiar, but doesn't do... Actually, you know what? There is a, there, the, the best way I could describe it is that it gives you what you want to see, but not, or it gives you what you expect to see, but not the way you expect to see it. I think that would be probably the best way to put it with this. Um, one, uh, one kind of funny scene I do have to bring up, though. I did kind of skip this because uh, I, I went straight to the whole thing where uh, Lana Lang got kind of uh, uh, possessed by uh, uh, Lara. Uh, I forgot to mention, like, Lana, like, first seeing Superman for the first time in the show, and her just being like, oh my gosh, it's Superman, I can't believe I'm seeing Superman in real life. 
I, I, I do have to admit, I, it was so hard for me not to laugh that entire scene. And I know that was kind of the point, but I still look at, at you know, kind of Superman and how his only disguise is glasses. And it's just so funny to me how many people are that close to him. And then they'll see Superman and somehow not be able to notice that they're the same people. Uh, you know, I'm sure there's plenty of, uh, you know, headcanon reasons that people will come up with. Like maybe the glasses actually disguise his face. We just don't see it because obviously, you know, you're not going to get two different actors to play Superman. That'd be really lame. Uh, but you know, I, I, I do find it funny a lot of times. And so it was really hard to laugh or it was really hard not to laugh at that one scene in particular. Now there is a negative uh, critique I do have to give this episode. And it's when it comes to the overall fight that we got at the very end, it looked terrible. Uh, the special effects were really bad. And I think part of the problem is that they went from what was originally in Morgan Edge's plan to be five uh, people that would have been taken over by Kryptonite uh, or sorry, Kryptonian sentience. Uh, it ended up being like, I want to say it was like 15 or 20 different people ended up be becoming Kryptonians. And because of that, you had that many people going after Superman at the very end. Basically, Superman has to power up a device that, um, that'll essentially clear all of the uh, people from being pr possessed by Kryptonians. And you have, and but in order to power up this device, they need something, uh, an energy source like that produces as much energy as the sun. And the way Superman goes about this is tricking all the trip Kryptonians to like trying to heat vision Superman, whereas Superman will then put the uh, power source in front of them. So it'll, their heat vision will just automatically power it up. Um, and it works. But the whole, and the, and the plan was good. I just think the whole sequence looked absolutely terrible. And I think part of that was because they tried to do too many. I feel like what they should have done was rewrote it so it would only be four or five different people going after Superman and the special effects would have been a lot easier to do. But because you had 20 people uh, going after Superman and you had you had this one shot where it was all of them side by side, but it looked really bad because it looked straight up like, you know, you had like tw uh, 12 different people in front of a green screen and they were all like cropped in together rather than 12 people like st actually standing side by side it it did not work uh unfortunately and it was absolutely terrible now that said i watched um i watched this clip of it on youtube uh, before recording this review. I know I said I didn't rewatch the whole episode and I didn't, it was, but I did watch this clip of it on YouTube because I had to be sure it was as bad as I remembered uh, last night. And it didn't look too bad on my computer. Now keep in mind, my, the computers that I'm using to record, uh, they run usually at 1080p, so they can't truly capture what a 4K uh, visual would look like. Now, when I saw the episode last night, I was at my girlfriend's house and she has a 4K television. And I realized that I think the reason the effects look so bad is because I was watching it in 4K. And with this show being shot on really expensive anamorphic lenses, uh, maybe it's it, maybe that was part of the problem is that it, the effects become way too obvious when the uh, when the camera quality is that clear and you're seeing it in 4K. I think that that's what causes the effects to look like even more fake than they already do. So if you watch it on an HD television screen, I think you'll be fine. I would recommend not watching this episode though on a 4K television because I think that's what really made the special effects look absolutely terrible in the end. Um, so, uh, before I wrap this, uh, review up, I do want to talk about kind of one interesting, uh, meta kind of, uh, thing that happens in this episode that I thought was really interesting. So you got Morgan Edge who is, you know, trying to kind of colonize earth. And, uh, one thing kind of, you know, notable about Morgan Edge is that he is British and then you got Superman trying to save the Earth. And one thing notable about Superman's actor, Tyler, Tyler Hecklin, is that he is actually part Native American. So I thought this was uh, kind of an interesting, I don't know if that was intentional with this episode or not, but there was kind of that kind of uh, meta aspect to it that I thought was uh, really interesting for sure. 
Now, of course, the plan works perfectly. The Kryptonians power up the device, uh, meaning that uh, when it goes off, all of them are suddenly freed. Uh, no one else, no one's being taken over by Kryptonians anymore, except for um, I, I can't. I keep forgetting Morgan Edge's assistance. Uh, oh, I keep forgetting her name. Uh, but she's the only one still uh, currently being taken over by uh, Kryptonian. But everyone else is freed, inclu including Kyle. Now, of course, the one thing I could totally nitpick about this whole thing is that they were all in the sky when they when they got freed. So theoretically, you'd think they would have fallen to their death, but they don't. They all fall to the ground, but they're perfectly fine when they get up. So maybe it was just they had that Kryptonian strength when they landed, but then as soon as they woke up, it, it, went, it went away or something like that. Uh, again, that's just a nitpick though I'm, I'm sure that's probably the explanation in universe that they'll give uh but you know it would have been interesting to have like an explanation for how none of them died or you know even having a scene where they're all falling but superman has to like you know save them each one at a time because obviously even superman i don't think could find a way to carry 20 people at once unless they did it like kind of how they did it in iron man 3 with the airplane after it blew up that would have been kind of cool but really hard to film on a television budget so i can see why they didn't uh but instead when it comes to superman he ends up uh seemingly losing his powers temporarily and being uh being uh like basically he falls down into the north pole over by the uh, fortress of solitude this kind of gives me the idea that next week's episode might actually be a little bit of a clip show and i don't mean like a recap of the season i mean like judging by the trailer that i saw for next week's episode it looks like it's going to be kind of a recap of his origins which we've already kind of gotten in the very first episode but i think this will talk more about more of his uh you know him taking up the uh, name of Superman and what it truly meant for him when he first started becoming Superman uh, so really interested to see how that goes uh, and then the episode after that I believe is when we finally get Diggle onto the show so of course you know, I love David Ramsey. I love the episode that of Superman and Lois that he directed. He was actually recently in Batwoman 2. And uh, while I haven't gotten to, around to that episode yet, I did watch Indy's review of it. And I am really excited to uh, check it out. I'm currently catching up on Batwoman, so I haven't like fully caught up on it yet. But I'm almost there, and I'm really excited to see how he does on that show. But I imagine like him on Superman and Lois, it's probably going to be very similar to how they do it on Batwoman. Because from what I understand, it's very downplayed compared to the rest of the episode he's really just there for a few scenes and which makes sense because he doesn't really know anyone on that show and I imagine it being kind of similar with Superman and Lois like he does know Superman but uh, at the same time he was never close with Superman so I don't see him being like really on the sh the uh, episode for that long so i'm really curious to see how long he ends up lasting but uh overall guys um this was a really awesome episode again i don't think uh i don't think there's been a single time with the exception of episode three that i haven't said that this is an awesome episode but it's another win and again like um i do think kind of the themes that they're exploring with superman and uh, morgan edge are absolutely fantastic things that i did not see coming and i think are done incredibly well so i look forward to seeing how this all plays out i believe we got 15 episodes this season which means we got five more episodes to wrap everything up and uh yeah it's going to be really exciting to see uh how they stick the landing on this uh but guys of course at the end of the day these are just my a plus opinions we here at a plus opinions always want to know what you guys think so definitely let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this episode or not definitely hit that like button subscribe to our channel but of course guys above all just remember to keep it a plus